Ben Schaffer, <coughs> Roman Madura, Kerry Baker, David Bogus, Randy Bonsinski, Barbara Boritsa, Daniel Bedalik, Ernie Bedalik, Nels and Francis Gorella Christensen, Roger D. Christensen, Father Larry Coulter, Riley Dolan, Terry Douche, Linda Gobel, Rita Goretzky, Daniel Hurt, Ralph Ignowski, Terrence Jake Jacobowski, Leonard and Delphi Budney Jamrog, Alois Jarecki, Donald Jarzinka, Rose Jasnock, Marge Jarabic, Lois Badura Kaminsky, Frank Konwinski, Jr., Larry Kosmicki, Frank Kaborik, Joanne Kozak, Carl Krolikowski, Clarence and Regina Lewandowski Krolikowski, Alvin Kitkowski, Dale Lewandowski, Dwayne Lewandowski, Carol Mashka Lope, Harold J. Morcheski, Tom Marpichka, Ralph and Emma Pekorski, Larry Sabatka, Ernest Funsinski Schmidt, Walter and Sally Shapkowski, Cyril and Mary Shruka, Skrupa, Dolores Slavishevsky, Teresa Slazarski, Mary Spatansky, Jean Gappa Stinka, Evelyn Waltman, Joseph Worth, Melvin Wojtelevich, Clarence and Lillian Dezingle Wadalevich, Laverne Wadalevich, Richard Butch Wozniak, and Brent E. Wysocki. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, number four, Let the Sunshine In. Let us first of all acknowledge 
the times that we have failed our Lord, let us invoke his divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the help and hope of sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the glory of the angels and saints. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd who continues to walk with us each new day. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. search them out, or whoever knew your counsel, 
except you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high. And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord.
uh, and with very few religious values being being held. And so, you know, the what God is saying through the uh, through Sirach and the writer of, of of the Book of Wisdom is saying that we have to live for God alone, not for ourselves. Don't let yourselves be influenced by all these other things happening around us, whatever the end thing may be, God has got to be first. That has got to be our first priority in life. Everything else, we've got to do things as our, as our Lord God would want us to have that perspective and outlook upon how to live our lives and of the values that mold and, and form our lives that make us the people that we are. Now, shifting gears a little bit, but following on these, uh, the message of these readings, let's shift to the 1870s. You know, we have uh, many Poles coming over to the New World. Conditions are not good in Poland. There's not even a Poland on the map. It's completely occupied by, by Russia and Austria and Germany. And there's a lot of forced conscriptions and whatnot going on, forced conscription into the military. And so there's a lot of immigrants coming in during these years, the 1870s and 1880s, many Poles coming over to the New World. And here we have a group, the, uh, the, uh, the fraternal group, uh, the famous well-known fraternal group, the Polish Roman Catholic Union, plus, along with the railroads who were advertising, uh, free land, or land in very easy terms, so to speak, that was being made available on the virgin prairies out in the central part of the country, in, in the central part of Nebraska. And you know, granted, life was not very easy in Poland, and life was not easy for the new people coming from the rural areas of Poland, settling in Chicago and other urban centers, that was really quite a chore for them, trying to adjust to this alien environment that was so different from what they were used to. But yet, the prospect of free land, you know, out west in the center of our country, seemed very, very attractive. And so, many people taking that risk, you know, taking a leap of faith, they committed themselves to settling out in these new lands. And so we have these people, you know, uh, 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 you know, accepting that challenge, going out into the treeless prairies with deeply rooted uh, uh, grasses that made it difficult to break up the sod, you know, facing the prospect of a harsh environment with possible tornadoes, with possible years of drought, with a possibility of plagues of grasshoppers of prairie fires, of winter blizzards, uh, they were t willing to take that leap of faith and to sign on, so to speak, to the challenge of settling this new land. And I read some place, I read in one place, they said, there were those who came and kissed the earth and said, ah, Nebraska, a land favored by God. Well, on the other hand, there are other people that not long after that said, they looked at the dry plain and cried, Lord, help us. You know, this was the reaction. A lot of mixed feelings. But yet they came. They came by large numbers to central Nebraska to settle in places like New Posen, Farwell, or Hoinisa, um, um, or Papham or Bolson, Illyria, uh, to Ashton, and Loop City, and Elba, to the century of these communities in Howard and Sherman County. They came and they took that risk. They took that leap of faith to settle this land. But one of those things that was very important to them, which they prioritized amidst all the other challenges, amidst all the work that they had to do, and settling this new land was the priority of God in their life. Their faith, their Catholic faith was very, very important to them. 
they know, they knew from the past that it was their faith in God that got them through difficult challenges in the past. With impossible odds, they learned that over history. They, you know, they, they learned that in the old world, that it was their faith that helped them to survive in spite of all the obstacles. And we know that's so true that through history, that against great odds, that they had that firm faith in God and somehow God helped them make it through those situations. And so among the first priorities that all those settlers had, wherever they settled, was that of building a church. And of course, the first church in this part of the state, this part of the country, Nebraska, was that in 1877, with the founding at New Posen of St. Anthony's Catholic Church, which today is in Firewall. And, uh, but that was their first priority. And we were told that people, because of their, their, you know, their, their wagons pulled by horses, their carriages pulled by horses, that getting from wherever they were over to the only first, that was the only church at first where there was a priest, in order to get over there, over to St. Anthony's, that was sometimes, it took them all day. Sunday was written off as a day for church work. It took so long, I was just getting to it from church. But yet, that was important to them. And of course, later on, as time went on, that they began having masses in people's homes until they were able to build a church in these other communities as well. But this was an essential part of who they were. They knew their identity as Poles, their background, their heritage, and also of their Roman Catholic faith. That was who they were. That was their identity. And here they were, you know, speaking a foreign tongue amidst all these other alien cultures they were coming in contact with, with all these other different uh, immigrant groups and, and people speaking, uh, speaking English. Here they were with their language and their different traditions. And sometimes it made them feel at odds you know, with their surroundings. But yet, that was part of who they were. They did not want to surrender those things. They did not want to just become just like everybody else around them. They wanted to be American, but yet, they also were proud of their heritage, of their Catholic, Polish heritage. And it was, let God's will be done. As I go about these things, let God's will be done. My neighbors may say, oh, you could find better time on Sunday instead of spending the whole day uh, riding all the way over to the church and mass, and, you know, that there are other things you could be doing this day better on your farm, you've got so much work to do, that that would be a better use of your time. But yet, for most of them anyway, they realized what their priority had to be. Let God's will be done in my life. Not what I want, what my neighbor wants, no, but what God wants of me. And so, you know, that's really an important lesson for all of us as well. It's really good for us to continue to remember and to pass on to our young people of who we are as Catholics and also of our heritage, of all of our heritage. You know, with new refugees and immigrants coming to our country from different lands from throughout the world, from Africa, from Latin America, and from other lands, it's always good for us to lend a sympathetic ear to the story that they have to tell as well. The story of why they are looking for a new life. Why are they leaving the lands that they are? Why are they willing to risk with their own language and whatnot? You know, coming to a land where they may be surrounded by, by maybe alien values or culture or language that, you know, they're willing to take that risk. And uh, being planted in a new land, in a new culture. With our ancestors, our grandparents, maybe our great-grandparents, we, as we recall their story, we can identify with that. They made new lives in this land, 
and we are the products of that. And we pray that as we listen to our Lord speak to us through Scripture, that we also may continue to rededicate ourselves to serving God and to serving His values above all else. Amen? Amen. A pop popular closing for letters, or maybe, or maybe a homily, my homily is Zostai Zabogium. What is that? Stay with God. Zostai Zabogium. Stay with God. Or, or what is it? Ish, ish Zabogium? What's the other one? Go with God. Ish Bogium? Something like that. It'll be Ish Bogium. Go with God. So that's always, we can't do better than that. To stay with God, to go with God. And we pray that for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we may always go with God, and that we may always put God first in our lives. Amen. 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 petitions before our Heavenly Father at this time. <clears throat> For our nation, that we may always stand as a land of liberty, and that we may always cherish and protect those values which are part of our heritage. As Americans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father and the Church, that the Church may continue to be purified, that it may be always a source of truth and of justice, and uh, in living in today's world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work the land, those who farm, those who ranch, that their labors may bear fruit, that in the midst of adversity of weather, that they may persevere in spite of everything, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick at this time, for those who are dying, that the hand of the Lord may be upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones near and far, and for our ancestors, our relatives living in distant Poland and other lands of the world, that we may always remember our identity as who we are and where our roots are, and that we may cherish those values and that heritage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who help us and assist us in our in our work here at the Polish Heritage Center, uh, that uh, that it may continue to flourish and as a sign of a, of a reminder of our Polish culture in Nebraska, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all those who have been remembered in this Mass and the memorials that have been read earlier today, earlier in this Mass, that... Uh, 
that they may be in our Lord's eternal care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear all of these heartfelt petitions and always take them close to the sacred heart of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is number three to the music of Blue Skirt Waltz.
and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels and saints, we do raise our voices in praise. Joseph, the most chaste 
spouse, with the blessed apostles and Francis of Assisi and all the saints, and all the blessed apostles who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
nebude, až máš to prostě, ještě mě vzpět do kusy, žádný lid vše bude, zač se nebude. Thank you for joining us here today for this Holy Mass as we begin our Polish Fest today. And uh, we're so pleased to have people who have assisted us in our various ministries during Mass in a special way. We really appreciate uh, Myron Osotowski and, uh, and, and his trio here uh, for their contribution of their music. We really appreciate that. And, part of the Polish soul. <laughs> um, and um, immediately following here, you're invited to join us for the uh, Polish buffet over at the parish hall here. And uh, so there's plenty of wonderful things on the um, uh, on the uh, tables there for the buffet. So smachnego, good eating. So enjoy yourselves. But you know, do take advantage of the other things as well going on. The, you know, the country store and the baked goods uh, and go over to the Polish uh, Heritage Center that will be open and the gift shop over there at the center is open. Then we'll have, you know, the other things and activities for the children also at the hall and uh, indoors and outdoors. And we'll have the polka band playing. Uh, we have the orchestra over there as well. And um, and at 1.30, we, you know, we do have here, around 1.30, we do have a, a, a session, and it's a folk, Polish folk tale, 
And at 2 o'clock, then there is a, a Polish sing-along, and I guarantee that will be a lot of fun. I'm so glad to see Tom Jedlowski is here from Omaha as well. We're always so glad when we have some of our friends from the Polish home in Omaha join us in our celebrations. That always adds extra to it. So, you know, you're invited to those things. And of course, at 2.30, we have um, Elizabeth Gross from Centura Schools, uh, who after her uh, travel over in Poland uh, this uh, uh, recently in, in visiting the concentration camps there, uh, gives her reflections upon uh, what meaning that it had for her. And so, and that talk will be here at the church at 2.30. And so you're in, invited to join us in that. But there are a lot of other things going on, a country store and other things as well for the silent auction. Lots of great items, so just enjoy yourself. Don't don't rush off. Take your time today, and uh, and uh, they even they even have a, a beer garden as well too. So maybe that, that might be your thing. So, but anyway, uh, so we're just so glad. We really appreciate all the work of everyone who's helped us out in a special way with um, uh, with uh, Sandy Mudlock and and and, and our. And our uh, Board of Directors for our Polish Heritage Center. It really takes a lot of work in putting these things together, and so we're really greatly appreciative. And of course, uh, even though no longer on the board, Phyllis Pichotta is still a guiding spirit for us, although she's still living as you can see the same spirit. <laughs> she's physically among us, very much so. so um, but anyway, but you know, and I know I can't remember everybody, but I really appreciate everybody's work that goes together on this. And, and so just enjoy yourself today and, and have a great day and just enjoy uh, your Polish heritage. Uh, please rise. And to just save a little bit of time, we'll just say our blessing prayer so that we can go to the hall that can start writing the wheel over there. So let us together pray. Bless us, O Lord, with these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. In the oitsa, be set up, you do much to take. Amen. Amen. Our holy mass has ended here, but let us go forth and continue to celebrate the goodness of our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us in that. This is the day.